Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next point, all right? This is another thing that you'll see, I've seen again over and over in numerous sources. FM radio and TV signals are similar in strength to that from Wi-Fi in classrooms, all right? And then again, from the BBC, the modulated frequencies that carry Radio 4 and ITV into our homes are just as powerful as the wireless networks and a lot more pervasive. Um, I got another even more technical quote. Wi-Fi mm-hmm. systems emit high-frequency electromagnetic radiation, but at very low power. Mm-hmm. Approximately 0.1 watt emitted from both the computer and the router antenna, compared to a cell phone that emits 1 to 3 watts. Cell phones are 10 times stronger than Wi-Fi. Cell phones are 100 times stronger radiation than Wi-Fi. So we have, like, various quotes. Some people saying it's 10 times stronger. Some people saying it's 100 times stronger. But they're basically comparing it to the FM, uh, AM, FM radio and TV signal. Okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about AM, FM radio to begin with, okay? Okay. <clears throat> We've had radio with us since the beginning of the 1900s with Marconi and um, Tesla. They're, they're the two people who have been attributed to, you know, inventing the radio signal. The radio is not in a microwave range. What we're talking about when we're dealing with Wi-Fi, what we're talking about when we're dealing with cell phones or cordless phones, is we're talking about microwave radiation that's very similar in frequency to your microwave oven. Indeed, um, and, and I don't want to get too technical, but the frequency we use for a microwave oven is 2.4 gigahertz, which is 2.4 billion cycles per second. So this is vibrating very, very quickly, obviously. The Wi-Fi is also at 2.4 billion cycles per second, and your cell phone is at 1.8 or 1.9 um, billion cycles per second. Whereas when we're talking about radio, we're talking about cycle, we're talking about a frequency that's in the low megahertz range, which is in the low million cycles per second. That's not microwave frequency. That's called radio wave frequency. That is not sufficiently strong to heat your body. The heating comes from microwave energy. That's why, you know, we use microwave ovens to heat our food. So that's the first distinction. So we're talking about a a, a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum that doesn't have the same amount of energy. The amount of energy in in, uh, electromagnetic um, 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 frequencies is frequency specific. So the higher the frequency, the more energy. And if we go high and higher and higher and higher, we reach something called ionizing radiation like x-rays and gamma radiation, which everyone agrees is very harmful, not because it has a lot of energy, um, in term, sorry, not because it has a lot of power, it's because it's very high frequency and it can ionize, it can penetrate your body and dis- disrupt DNA, it can break bonds between cells. So it's not the power that's critical, it's the frequency leading to the energy, okay? So that's one distinction that needs to be made uh, about this. The other distinction that needs to be made is how things are modulated. So uh, when we have um, an an AM station, AM stands for amplitude modulation. And what this means is that if you have a, a station, let's say 1050 on the dial, that 1050 is is the frequency that it's operating at. It's operating at 1.05 megahertz. So that's the, the ch- channel you tune to. When you hear the sound coming from it, that's called amplitude modulation. So the things are going up and down, up and down in a nice, smooth, continuous wave. When you have FM, you're talking about frequency modulation. And so you're at a slightly higher frequency. You know, you're in the, you know, low um, um, 70 uh, megahertz range, for example. And you have little spikes that are coming out telling you what the sounds are that, that um, becomes modulated. When you're talking about Wi-Fi, you have pulsed, digitally pulsed modulation. And all the research that I've been able to read recently, when you're looking at amplitude modulated, the, the AM radio station, for example, and you're looking at pulsed modulation, the pulsed modulation is much, much more harmful in any of the studies that I've been able to read from. Eastern Bloc European countries, uh, where they've done a lot of a lot of this research. So we have Wi-Fi that's pulse modulated, which means that if you take a meter 
and you, you you have a sound coming from it that's telling you whether you're exposed to it. It's going pop, 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 pop. So you've got the 2.4 gigahertz that's carrying this, and then you've got these pulses, you know, roughly a hundred times um, a second, and that's what's causing some of the damage. So you've got to take a look at things in total. You can't simply say this is a higher frequency or a lower frequency or this is more power or less power. You've got to really take a look at the thing and, and put it together. The most harmful radiation that we have in the microwave band is 2.4 gigahertz. It's the one we use to heat food. And initially when, when these frequencies were used for different things, it was the most effective at heating. That's why we use it in the microwave oven. It's also one that's not licensed which means that you can have a microwave oven in your home and you don't need to have a license for it. Whereas if you're a radio station or uh, if you're a cell phone distributor, you have to get a license from the federal government to be able to operate at that frequency. So 2.4 is not licensed, and that's why so many different devices are coming in. At 2.4, they don't require a federal license to operate. Unfortunately, this is the one that heats your body the fastest. It's the one that's actually the most damaging in the studies that I've seen. So, you know, we're not doing really smart things with the way that we're using this technology, and, and using 2.4 is probably about the worst things we can do. So are you saying that 2.4 gigahertz would be more damaging than, say, 6 or 5.6 gigahertz? That's correct. That's correct. That's what the evidence is showing. Um, there's one study I just read quite quite recently where they looked at four different frequencies, and the two most harmful ones were 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz, which was what was used originally for the analog phones. So when we first had analog phones, that was a dangerous frequency, and now the 2.4, which is just being, it's used for baby monitors, it's used for everything because you don't require a license for that range. And, sorry, analog phones are what, cordless phones? Uh, no, analog phones are the, okay, the difference between analog and digital is the way that the wave is propagated. One is a smooth, continuous wave, and the other is a pulsed wave. It's the pulse okay. that we're finding is actually more damaging. So we're, we're mov moving more and more to pulsed frequencies, and they're the ones that are most damaging biologically. So the 900, did you say 900 gigahertz? Mega, megahertz. megahertz. They were 900 megahertz, so it's 0.9 gigahertz. So were those like the original, you know, huge cell phones that came That's out? Right. That, well, yeah, okay. the original ones were even at slightly lower frequency than that. But, yes, the, they're the ones that um, once they became quite popular, a lot of people had 800, 900 megahertz phones that they were analog phones. Okay. 